go quick for us. Okay, so it looks like we are good to go. And we'll let some people kind of get logged in, get mm -hmm. comfortable. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to our live stream. This is Meryl with Akron Soul Train. And this afternoon, I am joined by resident artist Adonna Tillman to learn some fabric dyeing techniques and more about different fiber art um, techniques and materials. Adonna is a fiber and installation artist who will be showing at the Akron Soul Train Burton D. Morgan exhibition space um, in downtown Akron from February 23rd to April 2nd of 2022. So beginning of next year, which is coming up. Um, so keep a lookout for her upcoming show. And Akron Soul Train is an artist residency program connecting and empowering the community and artists by granting fellowships that provide resources for all creative disciplines to foster a more vibrant Akron. Before we get going, I'd like to thank our sponsors for their continued support, the GAR Foundation, Akron Community Foundation, the Ohio Arts Council, the Leaner Family Foundation, the Brennan Family Foundation, the Knight Foundation, the Char and Chuck Fowler Family Foundation, and the Corbin Foundation. All right, anyone that is viewing, please comment with any of your questions um, and we will get to them towards the end of the program. I will have access to those comments. Um, also, please comment on any of Akron Soul Train's videos, how you like this type of virtual programming so we can continue to produce the most thoughtful and creative content for you all. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop my own screen share and then that way we can get Adana going. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Adana Tillman, uh, the uh, resident and artist um, Resident artists in residence for December. Um, and thank you for joining this afternoon. And I wanted to um, share uh, some dying demos with you to th this afternoon. Um, and you can take these practices and, um, and uh, do some dying on your own time. Uh, if you want to come back and share your uh, projects later on, that'd be really great. Um, uh, but we would love to see how you would take these um, take these little demos and, and do them uh, with your own style. Um, so if you give me just a moment, um, we'll start the start the demos that I have previously recorded. So you can send in your questions and we can try and answer those as we go along and as well as the end. Um, I as well have a, a document of supplies that we can share um, along as well at the end. Uh, so you can kind of gather your materials and kind of refer back to this video uh, to, uh, to start your own dine at home. Fiber artist. I deal primarily in found fabrics. 
Um, I've really gotten into dyeing my own fabrics to create uh, my own pieces. Uh, my backdrop today is uh, some fabric that I've dyed myself. So here are the supplies that you'll need today uh, when working on your dye project. And I'll go through each one of these uh, to kind of let you know what we'll be using. Uh, first, you'll need your fabric. Uh, you'll need some white or prepared to dye fabric. I use Kona cotton as it is um, high quality. It's really great for use, um, holds the dye really well. And is really, I found to be a great product. Uh, the dye we'll be using is uh, the brand Rit Dye. Um, I really like um, this brand. I have been using it for a while. I wasn't sure on the color, but today we'll be using the wine. Of course, you can pick any color you like. Uh, so household salt, uh, the brand doesn't matter. Just get whatever on sale at the grocery store. You also need a one cup measuring cup and a measuring spoon, half a teaspoon will work. Make sure they're plastic and only use these for your dyeing project, strictly for craft use. You'll need a good pair of rubber gloves. As you can see, mines have gone through a lot, um, but you'll wanna make sure to keep the dye off your skin. Don't wanna walk around with a uh, dyed skin for forever and wanna keep those chemicals away. Uh, a metal tong for dipping the fabric as well as picking it up out of the dye. This will help uh, when trying to uh, mix around your fabric into the dye bath. A good pair of scissors. And this is some craft twine just from the craft store like Michael's or Joann's. We'll be using that. Um, rubber bands from a office supply or craft supply. Uh, these wooden clothes, clothes pins will be great for creating a pattern on our fabric, as well as binder clips. I like to get a variety of sizes. I've gotten a box from Walmart, and I've used these quite a lot in creating my patterns on the fabric. And last but not least are these popsicle sticks. Uh, these wonderful grooves, they're building uh, popsicle sticks, and with the grooves and different edging will create a nice pattern on the fabric. So with all these items, we can begin to uh, start the dyeing process. In the next video, I'll show you what we'll be doing next. Um, so, we have gone over the supplies um, and collected all of those, and uh, so, and first you'll need to um, almost have water to a boiling point, um, you use the stove top, I use a couple of uh, pots to boil some water, you want to get it really hot. Um, this is the best way that I like to dye, you get a real vibrant color in your fabrics, and it really brings it out um, and keeps that vibrancy. Uh, so this is my pot, my um, bucket full of hot water. Um, and today we'll be using, um, I have two colors here, I have a wine and an eggplant. I wasn't sure. I think we'll go with uh, the wine today. Um, we're using red dye, um, which is the dye that I, is my go-to uh, for right now. So we have our hot water in our bucket. We are going to fill this off. I suggest keeping like a plastic grocery bag for trash nearby, as well as making sure as your surface area is covered. I have a mat on here, but you may want to use like a tablecloth just to make sure uh, to protect yourself from any spills. Um, we are just doing a few samples. Uh, if you were doing, I'd say two t-shirts, 
probably be using maybe three fourths of a bottle. Uh, today will today we'll be using. I'm only going to pour maybe half a bottle, maybe not even a half, a little less than half for today for what we're doing because we're only doing a couple demos. So we're going to pour uh, the dye into the hot water. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. <laughs> uh, first, you have your hot water. You want to use um, the salt, just regular everyday salt, um, no particular brand. And you're going to pour um, about a half a cup into the hot water. I'm really excited to be part of the Akron uh, Soul Train residency for the month of December. It was a great way to um, come and spend a month back in my hometown. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pour the salt into the water. As well as do a half tablespoon of dish detergent. Uh, this will help to um, disperse the dye throughout your fabric. Now we're going to go ahead and pour our dye in. So pour your salt, half a tablespoon of dish detergent, and then go ahead with your dye. Make sure we set that up. We don't want any spills. Then we'll use um, either like if you have a spoon, a long um, metal spoon or plastic spoon or tongs. I like to use my tongs and we're going to go ahead and mix that up real well. So in this next part, uh, we're going to show you how to prepare the fabric uh, to submerge in our dye baths. At this point, uh, your water should be warming up on the stove. Uh, you'll want to right, use a good stock pan and fill that full of water and to get that to a point of boiling, just before boiling. I have four squares of fabric here uh, that we're going to use to do the dye demo. Uh, you'll want to dampen them in the faucet. We want them uh, a bit damp so they absorb the water better. Um, so I went ahead and um, got those damp into the faucet uh, to prepare with our clips and clothes line and clothes pins. For this first example, we'll be using the clothes pins. Uh, they'll give a great square pattern onto your fabric. You're going to want to accordion fold your fabric um, so you'll get a nice thin piece. So you can see we're going to fold and then fold it over. Uh, make sure you want to keep out really big wrinkles. Small wrinkles aren't a big deal, but you want to keep out any big wrinkles. And we're going to go through and accordion fold those until you end up with a slender piece of material. Then you're going to take your clothes pins and you're going to pin them along the outer edge of the fabric. Now here you can place as many as you like, um, put them in equal distances or haphazard uh, down the uh, column of fabric. I'll be placing one on each side, uh, equal distance all the way down the fabric. And that'll be our first example with the clothespins. For the second piece, um, we're going to again accordion fold the fabric completely until you have one slender column. And then we're going to use these binder clips and clip those along the outer edge of the fabric. Again, you can place them evenly down the strip. Uh, you can alternate between the large clips and small clips. 
that is really up to you in, dis in your design, design aspect. I'm gonna go ahead and get these clipped on. Oh, got those mixed up with the tiny clips and one to use medium. And you can use these clips over and over again uh, with multiple dye projects. Same with the clothespins. Uh, you can use them over and over again, just let them dry out and then you can repeat uh, use. So I'm gonna clip these evenly down the outer edge of my fabric with the binder clips until completely clipped all the way around. And there you go, that will be our binder clipped uh, die demo uh, with our square piece of fabric. With our third um, example, we're going to again accordion fold the fabric into a cylinder column. And for this one, we'll be using the uh, popsicle sticks. You'll need two and you'll sandwich the fabric um, in between the popsicle sticks. And can you use which edge of the popsicle stick you choose? I want to use the, the end that had the most grooves um, so that relief, uh, the dye will leave a great impression and the relief of the of the stick. And then you want to use your rubber bands. Uh, thinner ones may would have been, been more beneficial with this smaller piece, uh, but you can get rubber bands of any size. And you want to uh, then tie the ends of the popsicle together to sandwich the fabric pretty tightly in between. And then you will continue spacing those popsicle sticks uh, down across the fabric, sandwiching them in between two popsicle sticks until you've, you've added as many as you like. And again, uh, tying a rubber band on each side to secure the fabric in between. And that will be our third example. And let me get these rubber bands out of the way there so you can see all three. Now with our fourth piece, um, no accordion uh, fold this time. We just kind of bunch this up in a thin, um, a thin column. Because uh, what we'll be doing is using our craft twine and tying it around the entire length of the fabric. Now, 
Sorry about that, it's a little bit off screen, but we want to just wrap the uh, twine around the full column of the fabric. Uh, you can cross, crisscross, uh, do a couple rounds on um, one wrapping, and it's, there's no rhyme or reason. This is really up to you and how you want it to do. And then once you get to the very end, you want to cut off the fabric and tie the knot so that it doesn't come loose in the die. And there you have it. Those will be our four examples of dyeing today. Um, next, we'll, I'll show you preparing the water, uh, the dye bath to submerge your pieces, and we'll move right along to uh, creating uh, some great dye uh, examples for you today. We have the clothesline, the binder clips, popsicle sticks, and twine wrapping. Lay that down into our dye bath. And then you can use your tongs to kind of seat that down. Because you want to make sure that the fabric is fully submerged so that it gets a really great color. Okay. Uh, the next we're going to do a uh, dip down is the binder clips that have been clipped on the edges of the fabric that was accordion folded. Go ahead and dip that down there. Third one is the fabric uh, sample that has been wrapped in twine. And the last one will be the fabric that has been sandwiched in between the uh, decorative uh, popsicle sticks that have multiple grooves and cuts in them that will give a nice pattern onto the fabric. So go ahead and dip that down in there too. Uh, you can use either the tongs or if you've got your gloves on, you can uh, make sure that the fabric is submerged into the dye bag because you wanna make sure you get a nice vibrant color. Um, So we're going to go ahead and sit this in here. Um, I do say if you're looking for a, more, a deeper hue of your dye or a, a more stronger color, you can add a little bit more dye. Sometimes if you take, if you want to test the color before dropping your fabric in, um, take a paper, paper towel and rip those into a few pieces and dip it into the dye and see what kind of color. If you want something darker, then, you know, by all means, add some more dye into the bag. So these pieces we want, I want a strong color. So we're going to sit, leave these sitting in here for about 20 minutes. And while we're doing, and while it's doing that, we're going to heat up some more water uh, because we want to get ready to set our pieces and um, a fixative so that the pieces stay vibrant and the color doesn't run. Uh, so we'll be back and I'll go heat up that water and we'll be ready for the next step in our dye practice. Um, I have the uh, second bath of heated water. And we have our four uh, dye demos that have been sitting in the dye bath for about 20 minutes. So we get a nice rich color. Um, so for the second bath that is heated, um, red dye comes with a fixative uh, that's under their brand uh, to set the dye in the fabric. Um, but I use Retain. Um, I've used that a few times on my fabric and I love how it keeps the color uh, from bleeding and keeps the uh, color rich as well. Um, so this is what I have been using. You're more than welcome to use the Rit Dye Fixative. It'll come in a bottle just like 
uh, marked just like this and we'll say die fixative. Uh, but the retain, I got this off the of Amazon. It's a, I got a new bottle because I do a lot of dyeing. This was more economical. Um, and so it was a good buy and it works really well. Um, so uh, for this, for this dye bag, all you're going to need is a tablespoon. I'm going to go ahead and put this into there because I'm not doing much today. Um, you really don't need a lot. That, this bottle is going to last me a long time. Uh, so you only need like a, a tablespoon or so uh, for your dye project. So again, we're going to put on our gloves. I'm going to scoop this over there just a bit. And what we're going to do is transfer our dye uh, pieces into this um, bag with the retain to hold the color and get out of the excess dye. Um, so this will be great to use your tongs. And you're not going to take off your clips just yet. You want it to sit in the dye in the retain uh, dye bath to um, hold that color before removing um, your clips, rubber bands, and whatnot. Let's set this in here. Able to, you can squeeze out the excess dye in here. Set that in there. This is our popsicle stick one. Put that in there as well. Get another one for our inviting. There we go. Our last one with the binder paper clips. And again, um, we'll have this sitting here for about 20 minutes um, to really get out the excess um, dye and really um, be able to set the color a little like. And the exciting part is coming up. That'll be the unveil of our patterns. So we'll see you back in just a few minutes. And then we'll begin to remove the clips and we'll see what fun patterns we have created today. So we're going to go ahead and put on our gloves. Pieces have been sitting in here for about uh, 20 minutes to guarantee um, uh, the best color stay. So we'll be working on the clothespin piece first. We'll go ahead and remove those clothespins and then we can open it up and see that pattern. With the clothespins, you'll get this great square checked type of large gingham type of uh, check, checkered pattern in our fabric with the clothespins. And if with larger pieces and spacing out the clothespins, you can get really interesting patterns uh, with that technique. Uh, the second piece we'll have a look at is the clothespins. Um, you wanna make sure you squeeze all the excess uh, liquid, the water out, and then we'll start to remove the rubber bands and the uh, popsicle sticks. Uh, when I'm removing those, I just like to drop them back in uh, to that retained bath, and then I'll rinse them out later when I'm cleaning, cleaning up. Sometimes once you undo one side, you can just slide the popsicle sticks off, and let's see what pattern has come out. Uh, this one is really great. You can kind of see, um, I know it may be a bit difficult in the video, uh, the grooves and patterns of the popsicle stick. You can see how those have resisted the dye uh, to create a, a fun striped pattern. Uh, 
the third piece, remember, uh, we used the craft twine and uh, wrapped that around the fabric uh, to create a great look. Um, you can either try and untie that, untie the twine, or, um, you know, get your craft scissors and cut the twine off of the fabric, but you want to be careful that you don't uh, snip your fabric as well. So I'm able to get uh, a good amount of the twine off by uh, just unwrapping and untying the knot. Uh, the end is being kind of difficult. I may have to get my uh, craft scissors to cut those off. Again, with this type of dyeing, it really is a trial and error, uh, really experimenting, and it's always a surprise what will come about. Uh, you always get something interesting and fun at the end. Uh, I'm going to go ahead with the scissors and cut off this last bit of twine. So with that, we get a very fun, haphazard, kind of exotic kind of print uh, onto the fabric uh, with the twine. Uh, last but not least, the uh, binder clips. Uh, that'll be really fun to look at and see what comes out of that. So you go ahead and unclip those from the outer edge. I'll do that really quickly. And so we can see what our results will be. Oh, we'll get that open and look at that. Has a really great pattern that has come out. And all throughout the layers of the accordion fold with the dark and the light, it gets really interesting. Give you guys a closer look at those. I'll be posting the dried um, examples as well uh, so you can see the end result after drying. Uh, thank you so much everyone uh, for joining me uh, with this uh, demo die and hope to see you all again hopefully in person. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Adana. That was really cool. Um, so if anyone watching, if you have any questions, um, you can always ask them now. Anyone that's watching later can ask them. Um, I'm going to ask a few questions. Perfect. And um, and then I also thought it'd be fun uh, if anyone watching wanted to share their favorite um, outcome. I really liked the binder clips, how that came out. Um, I thought it was really interesting how, I guess, little the dye kind of goes all the way into the middle, it's like mm -hmm. even on those small pieces. If you left them in longer, would more would they be more like in the middle, or I guess interspersed throughout the whole piece of fabric, or it is it, like a it point? can. It kind of depends um, how tight you make the folds, like how compact and how tight you have it wrapped around either with the twine or with the clips like how how much fabric because um with larger pieces when of course you're going to have lots of more folds it does get lighter in between um the most i've left i think i've left fabric in maybe an hour and you will get a darker and a darker hue throughout the folds um but yeah if you keep it if you've do like light folds, you'll get more dye in there. But if it's more compact, then the dye won't transfer all the way through. Uh, but yeah, leaving it longer, will, of course, it'll transfer more. Um, the most I've done is probably maybe to an hour that I'll leave it in a dye trying to get um, to get it to go through all the layers. And I have to say, um, you're a brave soul for wearing a like pretty yellow cardigan while working with fabric dye. <laughs> Let me tell you, and it didn't hit me until the middle. I said, what am I doing? <laughs> well, I was impressed that it stayed 
a nice yellow. <laughs> yes, I said this is this. Uh, I didn't want to be this brave. I was like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, um, so that those the fabric that you use, like that, can be put in the dryer and everything. That the setting stuff really sets. Yes, and I've um, I've with other projects that I've used the retain with, I've washed a few different times. Trick is to use cold water, but it kept it from bleeding and the it didn't fade at all. So I was like, this is a great alternative. It's a great value over the small bottles that you would see with the Rit dye. Um, so the retain was a better option, but definitely. Nice. Um, let's see, did I have, I feel like I did have another question, but I kind of, um, how did you first like start learning about different fiber techniques and deciding that you wanted to use that in your art as opposed to something that might be like more mainstream like painting? Um, coming from my mother being a quilter, it was already since I was little, it was kind of already instilled looking at different fabrics, going to different fabric stores and seeing the different patterns. And then just wanting like, I love uh, uncovering new fabrics and new patterns when I'm at the store. But then I was like, you know, what if I can create my own patterns and, and create my own motifs, which I found, I was like, oh, that would be really interesting. So then like my next step, which um, I went to the library and got a bunch of different books on, um, uh, textile design um, and fabric dyeing after you know I watched some videos online but I'm really like a book person to be able to flip through and look through instruction um, so then it really became just kind of like playing around spending like a weekend just you know what will come out of this I don't know what it'll look like in the end but you know just trying it out and trying different things well this didn't work what about this and then like just really kind of playing around and seeing what I like with the outcomes. Um, as it, like you can see in uh, my virtual background, I have two pieces where uh, the backgrounds uh, were um, hand dyed by myself and kind of incorporating different techniques as well with that. Um, so it was just really just kind of putting myself out there, trying to learn something new to um, expand my practice uh, versus just using found fabrics and now creating my own uh, design motifs. Have you tried to dye fabric that already has like a design printed on it or anything? Um, not, I haven't tried dyeing. I tried to manipulate it more with a bleach. Um, so I've been taking fabric that already has a pattern and then trying to, to bleach stamp uh, different things on top of it. And that's really fun because you never know what's going to be that underlying color when you start to bleach um, different fabrics. Uh, even if you think it's it's black fabric and you think you're going to bleach and you might get a white, you might get a kind of a white, it might be a funny orange, or I've like did that with um, some fabric that was had a pattern on it, but it was denim and then trying to bleach that and you kind of with the different denims you'll get a different underlying color when applying that ble bleach so it's kind of been more of like manipulating with bleach and kind of abstracting the color from a uh, fabric that already has a design or pattern oh that's it's so exciting because like you said you never it you can't exactly predict exactly what's going to happen and then to be able to like work with it the way that you want to it seems yeah. really fun. It, it can be fun. You know, it's really a leap for me because sometimes you want to be in control and you want it like, I want this line here. I want these hatches and I want it to cross here. It's not going to always do what you want, but <laughs> it's very seldom that I've been doing the dying and it come out like, oh, I, I hate that. I like, I haven't had that happen yet. It's always been a pleasant surprise, but then you need to like be open and leave room for just, you know, spontaneous things to happen with how you're dying. Yeah, that's a that's a good way to approach <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, like, like it's, can't control it all. It's all just, just have a plan and just be open for interpretation for it to come how it wants to come out. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, that's awesome. Um, I've done a little bit of dyeing fabric, but not in a really long time. So yeah, it's, it's always so fun. So once again, for anyone watching or anyone um, in the future watching, 
uh, you can comment below um, and I'll still be able to see them and get to them. Um, and yeah, pick your favorite design out of the ones that was shown. Um, they were all so fun. I think my favorite was the binder clips, but you guys can, can. <laughs> the binder clip and the, I was really surprised by the clothespins. That's what they're called. Yeah. Cause yeah, it was yeah. like really clean. I was like, Exactly. Wow. And you think, and it's not a lot of pressure from clothes. It's like, it's not like they're holding the fabric super tight, but yeah, but they leave a really very clean, distinct square pattern through there. And I like to mix it with all of those. Like I might use clothes on the same piece of fabric. You might use clothes pins and then, you know, alternate with binder clips all the way down the fabric to kind of give you some different uh, motifs. But yeah, it's really great. That sounds uh, so exciting. Okay, so yeah, once again, um, I'd like to thank Adana for showing us this, the awesome video and talking about dyeing and demonstrating it. Um, and I hope everyone learned a new skill or has some new project ideas. Once again, Adana will be exhibiting at Akron Soul Train this upcoming February, yeah, February 2022. <laughs> Um, currently up in our galleries is new work by resident artist Aaron Foster titled We Should Be Home and the exhibition and film Reshaping the Narrative um, from the Akron Black Artists Guild. Both shows will be up until Saturday, December 18th. So everyone, you have one more week left to catch those exhibitions in person. Our gallery hours are Wednesday through Friday. Saturday, wrote down Friday, Wednesday through Saturday from 11 to 4 p.m. Um, and so thanks again, everyone, for joining, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a happy holiday.